Let's check back in Gulf Shores, Alabama, by video phone, Gary Tuckman, CNN national correspondent. Is that, how long is there a period of time, Gary, where they may just call you back in? Well, right now, Larry, we're prepared to stay here. We're in a relatively safe place. We have the shelter of a strong building right next to us, and we feel this is a safe place. But, of course, right now, we've just had sustained wind of only up to 45 miles per hour. You do the math, we have 90 more miles per hour to go. So we take it one step at a time, one half hour at a time, and then decide if we're safe where we're standing. What's that thing that looks like fire behind you to your left? like fire. It's a little red light on a transformer, and it's flaring a little bit. I can't tell you, though, that we have heard and seen transformer explosions on different power lines throughout this area over the last couple of hours. So we're, we're quite hopeful that won't happen at that particular one. Most of the ones that we've seen the explosions are the big, tall ones on top of the power line. But that's just a light on a transformer. It's not a fire. Are you prepared to stay tonight, Gary? Well, we're prepared to stay the night. We're in a safe place, as I said. We've covered a lot of these over the years, Larry, and one of the things the news media knows how to do is to look for safe places, to stay in safe places. <laughs> and we, even though we're right on the southern tip of the state of Alabama where this hurricane is heading, we are very satisfied, my crew and I, that we're in a safe place right now to cover this story for our audience. And what about you, Rob Marciano, in Mobile? How safe are you? How long will you be anchored where you are? Well, we're going to stay in this hotel, uh, or uh, mo anchored here, through the night. Our truck may be underwater by the time this eye wall comes through. We may be off the air for a while, but we're going to stay on as long as possible. Right now, I'm protected by this wall. We'll step out just a little bit. May not be the smartest guy in the world, but for you, Larry. Anything. <laughs> easily hurricane force winds on the other side of that wall blowing out of the east. We're going to be here until oh. we're blown off the air, but it's pretty safe. The, the, according to the hotel manager, these, these windows can take winds of over 100 miles an hour in the hotel, and, we're, and the hotel's built pretty solid with uh, some concrete. So we picked out a good spot, and uh, we hope to remain on the air uh, as long as possible and as safe as possible. What floor are you on in the hotel? Uh, right now we're on the fourth floor of the hotel. Behind me is uh, Water Street. Beyond that is Mobile, the Mobile River, which dumps out into Mobile Bay. Water Street is expected to be underwater by the time tomorrow uh, morning rolls around. And we could see water up to the first floor. We don't think it'll get much higher than that. The base of the hotel is uh, at 12 feet above sea level. As you know, as Max has to told everybody, the storm surge could easily reach 15, 16, or even 18 feet. So we expect the water to get up to the first floor, but not the fourth. The aptly named Water Street. Robin Roberts, you're in Mobile. What is your location? Uh, not far from Water Street, and you're right about it being aptly named, Larry, but uh, we're not uh, but a short distance from where Rob is, and we have a, a shelter as well where we're going to be and, and stay throughout the night and report tomorrow morning on Good Morning America. Of course, I had to get that little plug in there for my big bosses, but I'm telling you, what, what's going on here is that is like what everyone is saying. You're, you, you feel all right for a minute, and then a large gust will come along and, and almost take you off your feet, but I'm just amazed at how well it was. this area was evacuated and how people really really uh, took the authorities at their word and, and, and got out. They're not um, uh, people. We did see some sightseers out earlier, but it's like the storm, Larry, that's just taking its sweet old time and getting here. But now that it's getting closer to the shore, uh, we're really believing everything that's been said about it. it. It is as advertised. And again, we know it's just going to continue on in the coming hours and get worse and worse throughout the night. Sam Champion, do people get angry like, let's say, in New Orleans if they're asked to evacuate and it turns out they're not hit? Yeah, Larry, they do, and of course they do. Uh, what they have to understand is that, you know, it's difficult to pack up your home and, and have to make plans and then leave all of that behind and then have to turn around and come back and it wasn't as bad as everyone said it was. When that happens, you just have to understand that you know, um, the potential is there for a real problem and a real issue. And these days, we're better and better at telling you where the storms are big and where they're not and when it's a good thing for you to leave and when it's not. Um, you know, of course they get angry, but the best thing to do is, is to pack up and leave if you're in an area that's below where the flood zone is going to be and if you're in an area that's likely to be somewhere near the storm damage or near the center of that storm or even to the east of landfall. One thing I wanted to remind everybody who's out covering it live, Larry, there's a very big eye to this storm and when it moves across, the rain will stop, the wind will stop and skies will likely open up a bit. What they need not to do is get out and start doing some coverage and folks need not to get out and start cleaning up their homes. It's a big eye and that's 
second side of the storm is going to slam in without notice. And unless you're watching it on a radar or a satellite vantage point, you're not going to know how close you are to that eye. So just stay in until both sides of that storms move across, particularly that Mississippi, Alabama, and the very far western edge of Florida is concerned. There's no general rule as to how fast it takes an eye to go through? I'm sorry, Larry, I didn't hear you. What was that? There's no general rule as to how fast it takes the eye to go through? No, the problem with that is that the eyes are always different sizes with these storms. This one has been running about 20, 30 miles wide. It's been changing. It's been shifting. Some storms are moving faster. This one's crawling to the north. Your local Doppler radar. For tonight, windy with periods of rain, low 68, chance of rain 90%, rainfall may reach one inch. And on Thursday, windy with rain, heavy at times, high 75. And Thursday night, windy with rain. Heavy at times, low 67. Locally heavier rainfall possible. The week ahead. Good evening, everybody. A historic night here along the northeastern Gulf Coast as we watch the most powerful hurricane, perhaps since Hurricane Camille made landfall in 1969, rear its ugly head on the northeast Gulf. We'll give you live reports from the field coming up. And we have a storm alert for the Gulf Coast as Hurricane Ivan storms ashore tonight. I'm Paul Goodloe. And I'm Jennifer Lopez. It has been a long time coming, and now this major hurricane is blasting the coast. Let's show you exactly how close it is. It continues to bring heavy rain, not only uh, over the Gulf of Mexico, but on towards the Florida Peninsula, southern Georgia, southern Alabama, southern Mississippi, and extreme eastern Louisiana, including New Orleans, seeing some rain. And take a look at this. These are the latest sustained winds from some buoy reports offshore. And many of this, these buoys reporting strong tropical storm, if not strong hurricane force wind gust already. And expect this to continue to increase the winds on land over the next few hours. And we will bring you live reports all the way to landfall and beyond as safety and weather permits. Meteorologist Stephanie Abrams is being battered in the wind here in Mobile, Alabama. Meteorologist Bill Keneally is up in Montgomery for more on the inland dangers from Ivan. Meteorologist Mike Bettis will show us what's happening in Pensacola. And our storm tracker, Jim Cantori, is in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. We're going to start with Jim. Again, he's in Fort Walton Beach tonight. And Jim, you're a veteran of numerous hurricanes. Now, viewers are also concerned about our people in the field. Do you have a fallback or a safety point as uh, weather conditions start going downhill there? No question. We're in a very, very sturdy building uh, here. And again, today, we, earlier today, we thought this thing was going to weaken Paul and Jennifer. Uh, what happened is, is uh, Dr. Lyons, Stu Oster got together, hey, you know what, these things, this thing may stay a four. We've got to get them out of there. And so here we are, four and a half miles from the beach, number one, in a, in a concrete structure here, actually protected a little bit from the wind. Occasionally, a gust or two will come around the corner uh, and nail me here. So we are set uh, as far as we're concerned here. All right, let me show you one of the reasons why we left today. The Destin waves, by the time I left at 5 o'clock this afternoon, were already 15 feet breaking at the beach. We had beach erosion, enormous beach erosion, at least four to six uh, feet of beach erosion already. Water was coming up under some of the buildings there, and I actually uh, got a chance to do a couple of stand-ups on some of the boardwalks, or what was left of them, and this is what I had to say. 
So with a little less than eight hours before landfall of Ivan, you can already see what's happening as a result of the water coming in. It is tearing away at the beaches for miles. We have come 10 miles from where we were, and everywhere we have stopped, we have seen considerable beach erosion. We have seen damage to boardwalks, damage to structures along the beach, and there's going to be a lot more of that. As a matter of fact, you can probably add another eight feet on top of the water rise that we've already had when Ivan comes in, even though it's going to be well to our west. All right, no doubt uh, we probably was thinking about it being a three at that point. You can add another four feet on top of that, what I was talking about. So that's 17 to 30 feet possible coming in there at Destin. Let's go west to Mobile, Alabama now. Stephanie Abrams standing by. Stephanie, it's a lot worse uh, there than it is here. Tell us how bad it's gotten just within the last half hour. Jim, things just continue to, to deteriorate, and that's what is going to happen here as we head into the evening hours. Last hour, we had a gust of 60. I think this is going to be a little bit stronger. We're four stories off the ground because we don't want to get flooded out or have any problems with surge, but we do also have a safe location to head inside this hotel when things get too bad. Behind me, we do have this very large planter with a palm tree in it. We've already seen it starting to teeter, and this is solid. So we are going to watch for this. Also, there's a few lights that might be breaking down. Debris is going to be a huge problem with the storm. That's why people board up their windows for that flying debris in particular. The rain is coming down here in Mobile. That's going to continue as Ivan rolls ashore. Look at this radar where you see the yellows and the reds. That indicates heavier rain. So if you see yellow and red colors on the radar headed in your direction, that means you're going to see very significant downpours. Jim, I'm sending it back to you. Got it. All right, thanks a lot, Stephanie. Again, it's getting rough there, and it's getting rougher at Pensacola. Mike Bettis, you left Pensacola Beach. It'll probably be underwater by the time tomorrow morning rolls around. Tell us what conditions are like even far inland where you are now. Well, Jim, you were talking about how you've moved inland. We've moved about four miles off the beach right now. We're getting those waves that come in. You get a bit of a break, and then that rain and that wind just hits you right in the face, and it stings. There's no question about it. We've moved to our second location now, and even though the hotel we're at right now showing some signs of flooding on the first floor, so we actually have to go to a third location. That's how bad the conditions are in Pensacola. We've been here in Pensacola for the past three days watching this storm. We're going to take you on the tour of the city right now and show you exactly what Ivan's doing. We're in the heart of historic downtown where all the restaurants and shops are behind me. Tropical storm force winds right now tearing this flag to shreds. It is unbelievable here. Now let's take you down to the pier. So we've moved eight blocks down to Palafox Pier and notice the wave action here. This is not even the Gulf of Mexico. This is Pensacola Bay. Incredible waves. We're going to watch for storm surge. Let me show you what that storm surge can do to boats. Let's head down to the docks. The wind and the waves are absolutely incredible on the docks here. All these boats have been moored down, but the waves so intense here, they may actually rip them right from their moorings. These boats are very susceptible to the waves here. This location is actually fairly sheltered. Let's take you to a location not nearly as shielded as this. You want to see the destructive force of storm surge? Look at the waves crashing onto this dock in this gazebo. This is where families come to picnic almost every day here on the beaches. It's completely being ripped apart. And the conditions here in Pensacola will continue to go downhill now that Ivan is getting closer and closer to this area. Jim, nobody left in Pensacola tonight except for us and just a few de sheriff's deputies. And again, just watching our conditions tonight going downhill in a hurry. Back to you. Thanks, buddy. Mike and Stephanie, be safe tonight. As you know, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And, folks, we will try and give you live reports as much as we can, but we will probably lose power at some point and lose our signal. Stick around. It's going to be a rough night. This program is brought to you by... And it's actually going to... I'm going to go come across because we're already facing some really tough conditions right now. Rob Marciano, you're in that hotel, right, in Mobile. Are there any tourists in that hotel? The only folks in this hotel other than media folks are the people that work here and their families. So, uh, no, I, I haven't met one person who's just hanging out, uh, taking in the sights. Any assessment yet, uh, Rob, of damage? No, not really, Larry. Uh, the winds really started picking up as night fell, and, and we have had no reports of uh, damage. And I'm sure emergency personnel, if they are out in uh, in a situation are busy taking care of maybe the safety of others so uh, no word on damage we just had a wind gust report down there on the coast of, of hurricane force strength the thing about that being in a storm layer you always think it's a little stronger than it actually is uh, i'm certain these are close to hurricane force uh, they, they always feel and look worse than they actually are to get a wind gust over 100 miles an hour i i i, I would bet barely anybody could stand in that
Now, if you backed up again, you'd be blown around, right? You got your you little shape. You want to see that again? Are you asking yeah, me to do that again, again. Larry? I just want to see what uh, happens. Oh, you're killing me. All right, for you. For you, because it's the Larry King Show. Uh, it's not so bad. Uh, you're right. That's not even Hurricane Force. <laughs> the reason that one of the reasons... Hey, Larry, one of the reasons that we don't want to broadcast from there too much, one, one because it's tough to hear you, and two, there's light poles, there's, there's things that are attached to not only this hotel, but other buildings around. There's a couple of cranes building a skyscraper right there. Uh, the, number, you know, the, the, the main reason that people get killed in hurricanes other than the flooding is from not the winds that are blowing at 100 miles an hour, but the things that are blowing in that wind at 100 yeah. miles an hour. You don't want to get hit Debris. by anything. Now, Dave yeah. Mattingly, you, you are on the beach, right? How long can you stay on the beach? Well, we can stay on the beach until the water actually chases us out. And at this point, we're keeping a very close eye on it. High tide is coming in in about uh, in a couple of hours. And some local authorities came by a little bit earlier today and said they wouldn't be surprised to see us on the other side of the building in the parking lot at that time. So we're keeping a very close eye on this beach right now. Of course, the tourists have been gone for days, and the authorities made sure that no local residents were out here tonight. But of course, it's our job to be here to show you what's going on. So we're just going to stay just this much ahead of the water as long as we can. Good thinking. Sam Champion, I remember years ago as a kid, when a hurricane reached New York City, you probably weren't born yet. <laughs> could this go Could this go up into Philadelphia, New York, Washington? Could it go that way? Well, we certainly, uh, Larry, as you well know, uh, from Washington up to New York, have been dealing with uh, a lot of tropical remnants over the past couple of weeks and a lot of flooding rain in New Jersey and Pennsylvania uh, and also in central New York State. Here in New York City, the subways were shut down from what was remnants of uh, Francis because we had about five inches of rain come through one morning there. So we're watching this rain, and I know it's going to work up into the Appalachians. As a matter of fact, I'm really kind of concerned about that western Tennessee area into, uh, or I'm sorry, eastern Tennessee into western Carolinas where the mountain ranges will give a lot of lift to this tropical moisture and there's going to be some very heavy flooding rains there. Our one saving grace may be an area of high pressure with this particular storm that's dropping out of Canada and hopefully will contain this moisture down to the south so that New York won't go through with Ivan what it went through with Francis but these storms affect so many more people Man. than just the landfall. Uh, you know, so it's yeah we're going to see some rain out of it probably I just hope most of it stays down to the south. Sam Champion on the scene in a big Red Sox Yankee series this weekend in New York. Yeah. May not get played. Oh, well, uh, Max, you want to add something, Sam? Will it get the, played? Just that I hope it will, Larry. We, we really <laughs> want to see it get played. <laughs> Max Mayfield, is it going to get worse before it gets better? No question about that, Larry. We're getting some hurricane force winds now in extreme southeast Louisiana and uh, gust uh, to 81 miles per hour here at Dolphin Island here in the last few minutes. and. It's going to continue to go downhill, and uh, this is something that really needs to be taken uh, uh, seriously. Uh, this will cause extreme damage and loss of life if people are not careful. And as that eye gets closer to the coast and the winds become more onshore from the south and the east side of the eye, that's when that storm surge is really going to move inland. So, uh, you know, people haven't uh, even begun to see the, uh, the worst part of this hurricane yet. Is there a particular area you're most worried about? Well, sure, uh, just to the uh, east of where the center crosses the coast, and if it goes inland just to the west of Mobile Bay, the highest storm surge will be up here in the northern part of the bay. Uh, but even uh, having said that, uh, we're still expecting a tremendous storm surge well out to the east. In fact, this is going to go all the way across the northern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, this water just has nowhere to go up here. Just, it's going to pile up in the northeastern Gulf, and we're going to have significant uh, wave action and storm surge uh, uh, problems all along the uh, Florida Panhandle up into the Big Bend area. Max Bayfield, director of the National Hurricane Center, and all of our correspondents, thank you so much. Again, CNN covers this around the clock as we look at Hurricane Ivan. Martha Stewart has decided to serve her time. We'll talk about that right after this.